the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask you, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, our God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words which he speaks, in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, 
Let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. They came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one of having authority, and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, what do you have to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, everyone. We heard Jesus in the gospel go into the synagogue in Capernaum on the Sabbath day and begin to teach. Now, when Jesus did teach in the synagogue, the whole method and atmosphere of his teaching was like a new revelation because he taught with personal authority. He did not make 
any reference or quotation from the Torah or the commandments of God, as did the scribes, the Pharisees, and rabbis. But he spoke with utter independence, citing no other authority beyond himself, but with the finality of the voice of God. And in fact, Jesus had the right to do so because he himself is the word of God. It was as if he was clarifying the Ten Commandments of the Torah, which he himself gave them through Moses. So he wanted them to know that he was the source of the Torah, of the Ten Commandments, which they, they held with great esteem. And this was the essence of his teaching authority. So with the same authority, Jesus cured the man in the same synagogue who was in the grip of an unclean spirit, the grip of Satan or a demon. And in the Bible, demon or unclean spirit are synonymous terms which mean invisible or supernatural beings that wreak havoc in human life and are sometimes able to control an individual of whom they take possession. Now, because Jesus came to destroy the works of Satan, casting out the demons and undoing their effects was a central aspect of his public ministry. My dear friends, these unclean spirits continue to afflict our society today although in different forms and in different ways. There are unclean spirits of idolatry, unclean spirits of forgetfulness of God, not minding about God, unclean spirits of anger, hatred, and jealousy, the unclean spirits of slandering and gossip, of giving our minds to lustive thoughts, fantasies, or images, of being critical, negative, and judgmental in our conversation, of making God out of our work, school, or possessions, name it. We have different unclean spirits which afflict us today. So we need to believe that Jesus has the authority to dispel these evil spirits from us. And in fact, he does so in all ages. He speaks with authority through the sacraments, especially the sacrament of reconciliation, and he frees us from these evil spirits when he speaks to us through the person of the, of the priest. I forgive your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. He speaks with authority and we are freed from all unclean spirits that take possession of us through different sins which into which we fall through her human weakness. So all we need to do is not just to believe in Jesus' authority, but to take advantage of it, to use it when and where we have time. The time may come when you don't have an opportunity to go to confession or to receive sacraments. I feel so especially for the patients in the hospitals, particularly COVID patients, when they call, they want to see a priest, and they are told you cannot see him because you know, priests or outsiders are not allowed access to this facility. So most of them die without receiving the last rites. I believe you know, they receive the sacramental benefits through their holy desire, but who knows? So I think you, you don't like to come to that situation. So the good idea that we make the most of the mercy of God when we have time. Another weapon against unclean spirits is the Holy Rosary. Father Gabriel Amoth, the Vatican exorcist, relates that when we pray the Rosary during exorcism, the devil confesses pain, saying, 
Every Hail Mary is like a blow on my head. If only Christians knew how powerful the rosary was, it would be my end. This was the devil confessing during exorcism. And that's how perhaps he feels when we pray the rosary. He feels so bad. And he flees from us. Also, Sister Lucia of Fatima said that there is no problem, I tell you, no matter how difficult it is, that we cannot resolve by the prayer of the Holy Rosary. These were her words. So Mary is an intercessor for us who brings our needs to the throne of our son, Jesus. She reigns at his side as queen of heaven, yet she cares for the people of God as mother of the church. By praying the rosary each day, we unite our prayers with those of Mary. The beauty and simplicity of the rosary allows everyone from all walks of life to appeal to the mother with the trust and confidence. In the words of Sister Lucia again, to pray the rosary is something everybody can do, rich and poor, wise and ignorant, great and small. That's why, according to our Lady of Fatima, our Lord gave special power to the prayer of the rosary because it can be recited or prayed by everyone. May through the use of these weapons, the Lord take possession of our thoughts, words, and actions so that the unclean spirits may get no foothold in us through hate, pride, greed, sloth, envy, or any other evil inclination. The Lord bless you. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before our ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified and upon to spirit. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Our faithful God hears the cry of the poor. With confidence, let us present our prayers. That all clergy, religious sisters, and brothers serve the church and the world with holiness of body and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders watch over the welfare of those whom they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the victims of violence and war experience the blessings of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Antonio Ruben Garcia and all our faithful departed are welcomed by our Father into the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all suffering from COVID-19, chronic illness, and addiction feel God's tender concern and of that of their community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that all celebrating this Eucharistic feast answer Christ's call to serve all in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for the names entered in our book of intentions, and for the prisoners of resurrection, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord God, you deliver us from all evil and unclean spirits. Listen to our prayers and make us worthy followers of your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And it is truly right, right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, the Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the word that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exhortation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and we never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, gracious to make holy these gifts you have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, Eduardo, his assistant Bishop, the order of bishops, all their clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all we are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious, grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to you, apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. Let me never be born. 
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Following are the announcements for this weekend. The Knights of Columbus will be sponsoring their drive through pancake breakfast on Sunday morning, February 14th. Reservations can be made on the parish website. Since that Saturday is Valentine's Day, you may need to treat your sweetheart to a delicious breakfast. <laughs> yes, don't miss, please. And Wednesday, February 3rd, is the Feast of St. Blaise. Throats will be blessed after the 8 a.m. Mass. Another special activity of our nights is the fish fry. It will be served after this Mass. So please take a break from cooking to enjoy this delicious meal. I'll be this final announcement. Another special activity of our nights is the fish fry. It will be served after this mass tonight. Please take a break from cooking to enjoy this delicious meal. By doing so, you don't just take a break from cooking, but you also support our nights because they are doing a great job, especially this time of the pandemic, to support those who are badly affected. So we kindly ask you to support them by taking a break from cooking tonight. <laughs> Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him with humble pray. But do put them out. Thrust into hell Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit, longing for their Lord. For God's coming kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are the sorrowing, for they shall be consoled. And the meek shall come to rule the Alright. 